Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, Apple has just announced the iPhone 13. There's also a new iPad mini and that means there is a new Apple processor, the Apple A15 Bionic. Now, normally at this point in the year, I would do quite a deep dive about the A15 Bionic, talk about all the new features and everything we can expect from uh, the chip when we see it in the iPhone in a couple of weeks time. But this year, no, because there's a huge problem. The performance of the A15 has completely tanked absolutely nosedived. But if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So Apple has released the A15 Bionic, and as I said, normally I would look at all those new features, and there are some really interesting new features. A 15 billion transistor chip up from 11.8 billion, so there's certainly something going on inside there. You've got a new video decoder, a new video encoder, a new ISP. You've got 16 tops almost on the NPU. You've doubled the system cache, 32 megabytes. I would normally dive into each one of those and have a look, but Apple were really, really coy about the performance of the CPU and the GPU. And now I'm starting to understand why. So normally when Apple releases a new CPU, it will be saying, oh, it's 20% faster, 30% more efficient, you know, the fastest uh, Apple processor ever kind of thing. And they didn't do any of that. In fact, uh, all that it did was say uh, it's 50% uh, faster than co the competition. That's all they said, 50% faster than the competition, which is so, you know, generic. I mean, it's almost impossible to nail that down into any kind of, of number. So why are Apple suddenly being so coy about the A15? To be fair, they were very similar about that when they did the A14, but this year it seemed very much like don't mention the CPU and GPU. Look over here, the, the look at the new ISP, look at the new video decoder, don't mention the CPU and GPU. So what's happened? So well, let's look at Apple's numbers to see whether we can unpack this a bit. Now our starting point is that Apple have had obviously several generations of uh, the, the Apple Silicon. And if you go back to the Apple A12 Bionic, we found that not only in the iPhones of the time, but also in the iPad mini and the iPad Air. And we can, because there's now a new iPad that's come out, we can actually start to extrapolate some of the data because for the iPad, they did say something because the numbers look impressive. Uh, you know, up to 80% better GPU performance. So that's like, oh, that's a, that's a really good number. So let's actually unpack it and see what Apple have said about the performance of the A15 CPU and GPU. So as I said, we've got the A12 Bionic in the third generation iPad Air and the fifth generation iPad Mini. Now, when the A13 came out in the iPhone 11 series, Apple stated quite categorically that the CPU was 20% better and the GPU was 20% better. And that's the kind of things we've been expecting from Apple over the years. Now, when the A14 Bionic came out, uh, Apple actually did say how much faster the iPad Air fourth generation was compared to the iPad Air third generation. So in that case, then we now know that the A12 compared to the A14 was 40% increase in CPU, 30% increase in GPU. And that kind of falls in line because you've got the A12, then you've got the A13, then you come to that A14. So the iPad was uh, didn't use the A13. So that's the kind of thing we would expect. And now, of course, we've got the A15 in the iPad mini sixth generation. And in the iPad mini 6th generation press release, Apple do say that the CPU is 40% faster and 80% faster for the GPU. Now, 80% for the GPU, we'll talk more about it, but you may just remember I said 40% faster a second ago, and I did. When I was talking about the Apple A14 in the iPad Air, that was also 40% faster. And now you've got the Apple A15, and that's 40% faster, both compared to the A12. So you do a bit of maths. If it, the A14 was 40% faster and the A15 is 40% faster, then the A14 and the A15 are basically the same processor. There's, there's, there's no difference. It's, it's the same thing. Now, they did say 80% better GPU. Now, when you do the maths behind that, of course, the new GPU, they've gone to this five core GPU in the upper range of the iPhone 13, the Pro, the Pro models, and they've used the five core GPU in the iPad mini. So you're expecting a bigger boost there. And when you do the comparison with the A14, that means we're looking at about a 38% increase in GPU performance compared to the A14, if you've got the five GPU version. And that's great. And that's what we did. That's kind of numbers fall into 
aligned to what we'd expect. But we've still got the problem if you've got the 4 GPU version, uh, then the performance is going to be very, very similar. And of course, we've just said that the CPU performance is very similar. In fact, maybe no difference whatsoever. Now, these are all Apple's numbers. These are not numbers that I've uh, taken from any benchmarks. These are what Apple has said. So maybe their marketing message is a, is a bit wrong. Now, there is a counter argument, again, from Apple itself. And that is that when the A14 came out in the iPhone, it claimed that it was 50% faster than the competition. And now when the A15 has come out, it's claiming it's 50% faster than the competition. What they mean by that, of course, is uh, Android SOCs from, from Qualcomm and so on. Now, that does mean that if it's 50% better, and now it's 50% better now, well, we do know that the Android SOCs have improved over the last year. So to maintain that claim of 50% faster, then maybe there's a performance increase in line with what we're seeing from the Android SoC. So that would imply that, you know, it's not actually completely zero, it actually is going up slightly, but not by very much, well, between five, 10, maybe. Now, of course, we have got other things. Like I said, there's that doubling of the system cache. Maybe it's moved over to LPDDR5. So maybe they've tweaked the clock frequency. So we would expect the A15 to be better in benchmarks and certainly better in GPU benchmarks if you're using the Pro version, the one with the five core uh, GPU. But really, it looks to me as if the A15 has basically kind of got the same CPU as the A14. Now, there actually is a reason for that. So let's look at the things on a bigger scale here. We've also got the Apple M1 processor. Now the M1 processor uses basically the same CPU design as the Apple A14. And we've been waiting for Apple to launch kind of the M2, which is gonna be the second generation. It's gonna be even better. And it hasn't. We had the M1 appearing in those iMacs. There's talk now of an M1X that's maybe gonna appear in the next Mac models. We might find out about that in a few weeks time. And again, it seems to be all based around this same CPU design that we found in the A14. So you've got the A14 CPU design, you've got the M1, the same CPU design, you've got the M1X, if that's what comes out, same CPU, you've got the A15, same CPU, everything's kind of stagnated. Tweaks, more GPU cores, maybe a bit of clock frequency, but everything has kind of stagnated. Now, why is that? Well, I think there are two reasons. The first is, that, as I've said in quite a few other videos here, Apple did lose some key staff in 2019. In fact, one of them, William, uh, Gerard Williams III, went on to start a company called Nuvia. That then got bought out by Qualcomm. And I've now got a video here on the channel talking about how Qualcomm are saying they're going to have chips that are faster than Apple's chips because basically they've got Apple's engineers working for them now. So in that case, that was 2019. Now, it does take about two years to design a new CPU. So it looks like somewhere along the line there, they had to say, oh dear, we have staffing problems before you get new people in, before you bring them up to speed, before you find new talent, before, you know, it's a big issue when you lose staff. And so they've, they've missed a step. They've said, okay, we're gonna have to just tweak and tune and, you know, and let's see what we can bring out for this, you know, how long we can extend the, the existing A14 architecture and just stretch it out a bit longer. At the same time, they did also employ Mike Filippo, who was actually working for ARM, was one of the major CPU architects. I've actually got a video, uh, an interview with Mike Filippo I did years and years ago. I think it's on the Android Authority channel. Okay, so he's a huge, uh, he's actually a huge guy as well, he's really, really tall, but he's a huge guy in terms of uh, CPU design. So he went over to ARM. Now, maybe what they decided to do was that the ARM V9 stuff that I thought would be here in the A15, maybe that's gonna be in the next generation. And someone like Mike, I have no idea, I haven't spoken to him about this, someone like Mike is actually heading up a new generation of CPU, but they're behind. Because of the whole staffing changes stuff, everything kind of missed a generation. So the M2 and the A16 will be uh, ARM V9, new generation, everything else we're expecting. At the moment, they're kind of eking out these designs that we had in the A14 and the A15, the M1, the M1X, all basically the same big family of CPU. Now, what that means, of course, for the competition is that just like in a race, if the person running at the front stumbles, then the people who are were behind are able to come up and catch or maybe even overtake. And so there are two factors here. One is, of course, is that Apple have stumbled, which means the normal generational increases that we're going to get from Qualcomm, from MediaTek, from Samsung, oh, we're going to see those. And that means they can close in the gap 
to the uh, the Apple processors, but also, as I've said, and as I've got a video here on this channel, you've got the purchase of Nuvia by Qualcomm, and they are saying they're going to bring out uh, new chips, and they are reckoning they're going to be even faster. So a combined stumble, a combined normal generational increase, and an acquiring of new talent and new technology from Qualcomm could mean that in 2022, we're going to see quite a radical change in the leaderboard for overall performance. Okay, so there you go. That's my thoughts about this. As I said, the A15 does have lots of interesting things in it, but really this fact that using Apple's own numbers, there is a 0% increase in performance, I found to be quite startling. Please tell me what you think about my analysis in the comments below. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. I really do hope you enjoyed my analysis of this situation. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains, and I also have a newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, just the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.